Okay, so here's the plan. I don't always love how the videos turn out when we're shooting e-foiling. I do a lot of handheld stuff and I sometimes use the hover cam mount that's connected to me. They're decent, but they're often too close. I really don't feel like I'm able to show any of my viewers the board's true banking capacity and ability to change direction of the water. I, honestly, I don't know if this method's gonna help that. I think the only way to really show that off a, a follow boat or a drone, I think that e-foiling is not properly represented in most of the videos on the web. Even the, the companies with really decent marketing budgets. I am so tired of, of seeing boards moving slowly through the water in a straight line, often in slow motion, driven by models who look bored out of their minds. This sport is to me, I mean, it's like I'm, I'm basically getting a half an hour of deep carve banking, like I'm in fresh powder and Banff or Bale or Aspen. That's why I ride this board. I love that feeling. And if you're a person who loves that feeling, th this sport's going to give you the best feeling for the longest amount of time for the lowest price with the lowest pain in the butt factor than, than any other sport I've ever tried. I'm going to try to mount something a little different here. The idea is I've done front mounts here before and I use this from here to here like this carbon fiber pole and, and that puts the camera, well, I'll just take this apart to illustrate. That will, that puts the camera about here. Now you'll notice though, when I do that, the shots are often bowed, like they're fish eyed too much, or it's, you know, it's shooting my feet, um, or it's, you know, shooting upwards, like giving that sinister looking shot. And mostly though, the, the thing that I, I don't like about it is I don't, we don't get a real sense of how I'm uh, able to navigate the board in the water and change direction. You're seeing that background slide around. I, I want to get far enough away from the board that you can see how much it's being, uh, it's changing its direction, how far it's going in that direction. And like I said, this probably won't do it. I, I don't think we can get this without some independent um, perspective on the camera. I really, I really think drones would do a much better job or, or try, uh, chase boats or or um, like a shot from the side so this probably won't do it either but maybe i can with this pole this is carbon fiber it's very light um probably still too heavy for what i'm gonna about to do but it goes really this thing's long right like i can get drone like shots with this and i'm hoping that at about well, maybe this distance, maybe even a little shorter. I would love to know what I could do from the front of the board, maybe at about this distance. Let's try it. I'm gonna I'm gonna glue this on here, and uh, we're gonna you know try it. Doesn't work out. You know what? It's just time and a dollar's worth of water weld. Um, uh, I'm gonna lanyard the whole rig up to this safety catch. And um, the, the reason that these work is that uh, the, the force that's going to snap this off your board or break the post or something, that's going to happen all at one time. This is just a secondary like, okay, after that force has been gone, now you can still retrieve your camera. It's not at the bottom of the lake. That, that's why we, we use these. You can use multiples. Getting this thing to all float is a challenge it, it, because altogether this is going to be pretty heavy and you don't know where it's going to break. But you can run a safety line all the way up the pole and it should stay invisible uh, using the insta 360 uh, invisibility mode which i can't show you because i'm shooting it with the insta 360 and i have <clears throat> too often loaned out my 360s to other people who just lose them drop them one guy brought it to a trade show and put it down to talk to someone and walked away and that was the end of that but you know what? I try to go through life saying this. It's just things. It's just stuff. And not to stress out over things that you can, you, that are replaceable. You know, this isn't injury to humans or suffering and pain. It's just stuff. And I, I, I think it's smart 
to give stuff the value it deserves. And honestly, in comparison to life and the human experience, stuff is worthless. So not to stress out over this, that's why I'm willing to take this risk with my gear. Because you know what? Worst case scenario, I know I can, I can work hard, earn money, and rebuy it. All right, so I'm going to mix this up. I do. I use a lot of this around our properties. If you're a boater, you should keep a couple of tubes of this around. It's pretty fantastic. Um, it's super easy to use, and it is a waterproof, and it does last a really long time. I, 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 if you want to stick something to your dock, or you need to patch a hole in your hull, or you need, um, you know, if you need to fix a leak in a pipe, <laughs> this stuff will do it. Um, it's, it's tough. It's, it is epoxy. It is sandable. It's a two part epoxy putty and, um, and it, it chemically reacts. It doesn't, it doesn't need air to harden. Like this would actually harden underwater because it's a chemical mixture of the two different parts of the epoxy blending together. I'm going to put this on my other hand in case I have to touch it. So, um, I think the instructions say that I never read. And I'm often criticized for, and that's okay. The, the truth of the matter is, is I found that most things in life, the world's pretty intuitive. You can just figure it out. You don't need to read every uh, readme file that comes with every piece of software. You don't need to read the manual's addendum notes. Most software that's worth using, I haven't read any manuals to use it. I just learn how to use it. I learned to use Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, before it was Adobe's, and it didn't have a manual yet. It was I was I was in the beta program when I was like 14 or 15, and um, I was their their youngest user. It never came with any notes. They'd ship me a survey and a dollar bill, like a like U.S. dollar bill in an envelope, and I'd fill out their survey, and they'd ship me new. So I did it to get new new updates on, on floppy disks. And Photoshop does not need a manual. You can, just, you can just learn how to use it. Yep, just just by pushing buttons, Try it, trying it. Okay, got my little dab there. And I can tell it's just about ready to sit down. Why? Because it's getting stiff. Intuition. I'm gonna mount this one off the center. Maybe a dumb idea, don't know yet. We're gonna try it. And I'm gonna I'm put it here because my I ride uh, left foot forward mo most of the time, and um, I, I'm thinking that this would be probably the, the coolest angle to get, but again, could be wrong. Guess we'll find out. Maybe I should have read advice about this. I should have Googled it. Push that in there, and then I'm going to get some epoxy that's going to get in the way of my rails. <clears throat> and um, again, I'm not going to read anyone's advice on how to do that. What I'm going to do... Is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna slide it, slide it in there to clear that. And I'm gonna wipe that excess off, and I'm gonna mount that excess to the front like that. And then I'm gonna eject this thing, right? Because that now should be clear. I should have cleared the rails. I'm gonna wipe off any of the excess here so it isn't stuck to it. And let's pretend that I just ruined this right now. Like, oh no, it's gonna stick on there. And now I can't use this piece. Okay. Pretty much every time I buy any GoPro thing, I got a box full of these. I, I, I have more than I need. So I can waste them. I'm not sure why I'm, I'm being so careful to handle, I, as maybe the channel's picking up. <clears throat> so my, my natural approach to dealing with critics <clears throat> is to read through them, Decide if they have something valid to say, or they're just complainery, or if they've said something just downright, like absolutely stupid. The way I kind of view criticism is a bit like a chess game. Sometimes you can play against a person and they're like, you know, if you move there, I'm going to do this and that, and then you can learn from them. You can get good ideas from them. Then there are people you play chess against where they're beneath you in skill and they don't know it. And therefore, what you can do in that game, and the only way I can finish that game without being just bored out of my mind, is to have fun with them. Uh, some people might call that being snarky, and that, that's, that's probably true. But like, I'll try different strategies with a player. Like, I'm like, well, 
let's get myself, I've always wanted to try this defense mechanism. Let's try it against them because I, I can't just play someone and just beat them um, that I know isn't of my same caliber. I have to, I have to find a way to learn from that experience and make that fun for me um, or I'll never play them again. Like, so if I get snarky with you after getting some criticism, you should consider that me finding a way to continue talking to you. Um, and you should be honored because I don't have a shit ton of time in my life. The, the fact that I've spent time re responding to you <clears throat> should be uh, your knowledge that I have enough respect for you to give you time. And then there's the other kind of uh, criticism. The one that says, I was offended by. I don't care. You live... Well, if you live in the country I live in, and probably a lot of other countries too, we live in a country here where we're actually legally protecting people, their right to offend other people. And we do not offer protections for people being offended. It doesn't give you the right to defraud people or to um, lie to them or scream fire in a, in a movie theater. No, that, that's not what freedom of speech and expression is. Freedom of speech and expression means if you have an idea, you are allowed to present it. And if anyone gets offended by it, they're allowed to say, hey, that offended me and you shouldn't say it. That's fine. That, that, that's within your reason. It's just that it's okay for me to also say, I don't care that you're offended. If, if, if that troubles you, if you're not sleeping because of something I said on this show, that's your problem. And I'm not going to change who I am because your snowflake edges melted. I'm going to go to sleep tonight and, and not think about it. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, and you shouldn't care about anything I, I think or say, or care. it shouldn't affect you. It really shouldn't. If you like this show and you watch this show and, I, and you think I'm giving you good advice, watch it. Give it a like, don't really care whether or not you do. I mean, I want to grow this sport. If I say something that offends you and you're like, that's it, I'm never going to eat foil because of something I said. Fine, that's cool. <laughs> that's, while you're at it, maybe you should, I don't know, break some things around your house because of what I said. Maybe that would make you feel better. You're destroying, you're, you're wrecking your own fun. If you don't eat foil, that's on you. I think this is a killer sport that uh, every time I see one, you know, out there I go, that's someone not jet skiing and making a noise and polluting the lake and buying fuel and enriching the, the fossil fuel industry and making it stinky and making the water cloud. Like, yep, this is dead silent, makes almost no wake and is very clean. So I would love to see more people do it because I like a quieter lake. Um, I like to see more people doing it because I like to see people exercising instead of sitting. Um, I like to see people do it because um, I I like surf culture a lot that I've experienced has been had a lot of camaraderie. It's had a lot, you know, and wakeboarding had that too. It really did. Um, I want that. You know, I, I like hanging out with other skiers and snowboarders and surfers and kiters. And there's something about the way that those granola people do things that I just I just groove on. And yeah, I wanna I want to uh, place any part I can to popularize this. But it doesn't mean that I'm willing to change who I am or not say words that offend people. It, whatever comes to my mind is that's the word that fits there. I'm going to do that. And um, I, I, I guess I'm not really sorry that it offends someone else. I'm like, why, why do you care or think you have the right to say you can't say that? Because then I would have the right to say, well, you can't say that I can't say that. And then someone else would have the right to say both of you don't have the right to say what you understand that doesn't. That never ends well. There's no government that ever said, you can't say or think or express yourself in certain ways. And that's never been good for it. That, that doesn't lead to a good end game in that game of chess. So if you want to come in and you want to criticize anything about this video, like, you know, it's a fair criticism. My audio sucks and I should know better. I work in the field of creating media and I just for some reason 
made it down here, realized I didn't have my wind filter microphone, and I said, fuck it. I don't feel like walking back up to the house and doing it because, well, frankly, I don't really get paid to do this. It's just something I do for fun. So I'm doing a low budget porn version here, not because I'm hoping to get paid, not because I'm hoping to make producers happy, but I guess because I like the sex and this is the sex right here, you know? And so I'm doing low budget. This is low budget porn. This is just amateur hour. Cool. Guess what? This is probably dry enough. Oh, a little tacky still for me to reattach this. And then I swear to God, someone's going to come on and they're going to be like, I was offended that you said that you, you aren't going to change who you are. And I'm, I'm upset that you said a thing after talking about how you don't care if I get upset. I'm upset that you don't care that I get upset. That I swear to God, that will happen. That's going to happen. And I'll try to just stand up from the chessboard and walk away because you actually are the people that aren't worth my time. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to stick it in here and hopefully, hopefully I should have read. There are no instructions on this bottle. Oh yeah. It was on this little piece of paper that I would have to get like two pairs of my reading glasses on to read. Um, so I think, I think that this will fully cure within 24 or 48 hours, but that, you can start trusting it to test test whether or not you've gotten it. Yep, there we go. Perfect. That's going to be great. Oh, yeah. No, that's going to be good. That's going to be really good, I think. Now, um, if you really want this stuff to adhere to, to anything as tight as possible, Putting it on gloss coat, <laughs> not not real smart. Um, uh, I should have sanded this, roughed it up a little bit, because that increases the surface area that's on the um, that's on the surface of the board, and it'll cause it to stick. Just imagine it like this: like if I were to like stick two things that are flat together, let's call that um, uh, one. It's it's got one surface area, or I guess two in that case. But now let's say that I were to sand like make make put little triangles little pyramids all over my fingertips millions of them then the number of surface area contacts have just gone up by millions okay so roughing things before you stick they're going to stick better like i said i i'm not overly concerned about losing my gear because i'll tether it this may snap off though and I wasn't really willing to, to dig into my glass to test this because I'm not sure if this is going to work. If this doesn't work, what I'll do is I will pluck this off and I'll sand and just re-glass this, like, this area. Whereas, so I kind of want to test this before I go making something permanent. And if I were to really want to do something permanent, I might actually bolt into the board. Uh, that's another option I could do. There are ways that I can use very short, very, very short screws. Um, that would go into the glass and I can then use epoxy so that each one of those screws would be set into epoxy. It would basically be as though the board and the mount were manufactured together. I don't think I've impeded the rails. And um, it it probably won't be too ugly. Um, again, I don't really care if things are ugly. It's another thing about me. It's weird because I work in a field where everything I make needs to be beautiful. So maybe just in my recreational life, I'm just like, who cares? 100% function. I don't care about cosmetics, right? And maybe that's why I am that way, but, but I am that way. No denying. All right. Yeah. I think this is pretty good. I think we're gonna let it sit there and then we'll test her out. I'm a little worried about this back corner. I feel like, I feel like here's a place where I could put a little more, a little more mount and I might as well just do that right now since I've already got the gloves on and I don't have to waste another pair of these gloves. And, uh, which is, in, you know, that's not great for the environment. These are, by the way, nitro gloves. Nitro gloves are a little bit less likely. Some chemist is going to come on and be like, you're totally wrong. I can name a thousand chemicals that lead through those gloves. And you might be right. But I found that when I wear latex gloves in my shop, I will get done. And more often, regardless of the thickness of the glove, more often I will get done, take off my glove and realize for however long I've been working with that dangerous chemical, my fingers coated in and didn't realize it. When I wear an eye trial, I 
rarely, rarely have that happen. In the shop, I'm working with a lot of, a lot of oils and stains and, and uh, chemicals that, are, that essentially, they dissolve latex. And, and it just seems to me that, that nitrile doesn't, doesn't dissolve. I, I'm just saying from my own. Haven't read any, haven't read any books on it. <laughs> nope, just, it's a little of that garage logic for you. A little of the trial and error. I'm willing to pay more for the nitrile gloves because of that. You know what, I, I uh, someone, okay, now some chemist, th this is right, a chemist should call me on this one. You were uh, working with epoxy that had already been mixed up, and now you put fresh epoxy on it, and now it's touching your fingers, and now you're it's starting to cure before that's been properly mixed. I don't know why I'm giving the, the chemistry guy that voice. I don't know, I shouldn't do that. But, you know, um, you know and, uh, and so you did a bad thing, and now it won't cure as much. True, that's true, that's true. Yep. So, and then what I would say back to them is like, you know, that you can get a vocal coach. There are, there are vocal coaches that can make you sound cooler. Okay. I did not read a paper on where the adhesive should be stuck to make it the most structurally sound. And I'm very bad at mathematics. I'm kind of bad at geometry. All right. All right. I'm just going to check these channels and make sure that they're, they're clear. Oh, no. I got some on my mat. See? I'm concerned about that because that will affect how my feet stick to this board. And it probably will eat right through that foam, too. See, so I'm worried about the things that affect performance. I'm not so worried about cosmetic things. And you know what I have found, if I could be completely honest with you, the people that are really concerned about the cosmetic, they get a scratch in their car. Story, brother-in-law, uh, fantastic sports medicine surgeon. Guy worked his ass off to get where he is, and he deserves, he deserves the many dollars they pay him to be this good at this. But... I remember he bought a, a, a new truck, car, SUV. I, don't, I honestly don't remember what it was. Very proud of it. But he was like, man, I, I come out to my car in the parking lot, and someone's opened their door, and they put a ding in my car. And we're out in his garage, and he's showing it to me. He's all pissed off. I'm looking at him. Looking, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't see what you're seeing. You know, he's like, no, you don't see that. Here, put your finger on feel it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it is. It, it does have a little little like crack in the paint or something there that I can't see, but I can feel. And I, I stood up and I looked at him. You really were happy about being able to buy this car. You've always wanted this, this car, right? A car like this. And now you, you got it and you were happy. And then someone out of their carelessness made a mark on it that you know about and no one else does. Like I can't see it. And now you're not happy. You bought a thing that you thought was going to make you happy. And because something happened that doesn't matter, it's still going to get you to your job. It's still going to get your family safely to wherever they're going. You're now not happy. He's like, well, it's not that I'm not happy. I'm like, you seem really unhappy right now. Like we are out here and you're like angry at someone you don't even know. You're mad. And it's all because something happened to it. I'm like, I don't want to own crap. that's going to make me sad. And so, I buy a used Prius. I look for one with a couple of dings in it because then when my kids like learn to drive and like getting their first little smacker, I'm not like freaking out. I'm like, well, it's just a thing. This board is just a thing. It makes me really happy. It doesn't make me happy because of the way it looks. It doesn't make me happy because other people are going to look at it and go, look how well he takes care of his e-foil. It doesn't have any scratches. Oh, that guy really cares about it. I don't care. No, it makes me happy because I get to feel like I'm skiing down a mountain. 30 hour, 30 minutes at a time, three times a day. Uh, and I'm not paying 1500 bucks a day to do it, you know, right? Like I get to ride this thing all summer long and it makes me so happy to ride it. <laughs> like it just makes me so happy. And whenever people go, oh, e-foiling, it's so expensive. I'm like, expensive compared to what? Take your family to bail for a week. That's expensive. Uh, uh, buy a wakeboard boat. That's expensive. Go out to like North Shore, Maui, go surfing. 
that you could do, I guess, somewhat reasonably, but it's still really expensive for the limited amount of time and the amount of time you're going to actually ride a wave while you're there. I bet you in one day, I can carve more on this board and get that feeling that I love than you could get in a month surfing real waves. What I'm after, this board gives me, and it's the cheapest way for me to get what I'm after. And it's the lowest pain in the butt method for me to get what I'm after. And I think it's important. I think it's responsible to say, when I do this, when I spend this money here, what's that going to do to the world around me and the people around me? I try very hard to make sure that I voting, I'm voting with my dollars in a way that I don't have to make someone else's life ugly to make my life beautiful. So I try very hard to know how my money is affecting the world around me because i think that's way faster than me and more effective than me voting in an election like when i vote in an election i am one little tiny vote that somehow gets construed into a very complex uh, electoral system with gerrymandering i don't feel like i don't i don't feel like i'm doing anything when i vote i don't feel counted when i choose to spend or not spend dollars i feel like i'm saying a lot I know where these boards are made. I've visited the factory. I've seen the workers. They like their jobs. They like Nick. Nick runs a good shop. I feel really good about sending him my money and I feel really good about what he sends me in return. I feel like I'm doing the most responsible thing given that I'm addicted to this feeling of carving. And no, it's not the only way I'm gonna carve. I'm still gonna ski. And when there's fresh powder, when I wake up in the morning and, and there's fresh powder on that mountain, I snowboard and then it's hard pack and it's groomed. I ski with my parabolics and I love it. I love it so much. And like so much of my life is built up of memories of friends, with family on the mountains. Like I'm going to keep doing that. And you know what? I built memories here with my kids on that wakeboard boat. Just like I had grown up learning to water ski. I feel like I can build those memories with kayaks and stand up paddle boards and e-foils and I'm doing a better thing for the planet and I'm enjoying it more. And I'm spending way less money and I don't need a truck, a boat, a trailer, a lift, all the gear and I can do it whenever I want with other people or alone. Freedom, hello, wonderful. That is the most wonderful thing. There's my two cents. If you don't like it, you're at fault because you're still watching. Who's to blame for that? All right, done. It'll take a day to cure. And tomorrow I'm going to my first e-foil race because I just want to know, I want to know the sport has a future and I'm a little worried that e-foiling may go the way of the pogo stick and the Segway uh, if it doesn't get some competition to allow people to find out are they, are they getting better at this point i think the competition does kind of help